chance to meet a lot of you before uh, this got started, and that was a pleasure. And for the few that came in later, uh, we certainly, if you have questions you want to talk after, I'm here to meet you. Uh, I came a long way as well to be here. Uh, I flew in from Boston, but not directly. I actually uh, flew in last week, and I started out last Wednesday landing in uh, Barcelona, I think it was. Yeah, it was Barcelona. Did an event that night after a couple hours sleep, then flew to Bilbao, Spain, had another big event there, then drove to Madrid, had a Friday night leadership, and then Saturday we had a big event in Madrid. Had to jump in a plane early on Sunday morning because I had to be in Naples to recognize a new regional vice president in Italy. You know, what do you expect, the Napolitano and Napoli? Kind of makes sense. It's kind of a family thing. <laughs> Not the family, <laughs> but it felt like family. <laughs> and of course, lots of pasta and pizza. That's all they do. I think I gain five pounds every time I just show up in Italy. It's like they put fruit in front of you. It's kind of how they do business around the table and then I went up to Rome on Monday had another great event there and then it was time to try France so I flew into Nice and had a group there that we were just starting a new team in the Nice area uh, flew into Paris in fact it was Douglas Juru that had most of the people there in the meeting I did in Paris uh, last night yeah last night <laughs> and uh, and then today I wanted to be here um, to talk to you in this area before I head down with Zia we're gonna head back to London after the meeting and get prepared for Saturday which is a more in-depth training so if you're new at this or newer uh, it's a really important event to make the trip down if you can do it uh, because the leaders there in the area go through in detail each of the services and a lot of you know uh, the details about the compensation plan and how to do best practices for doing the business and I'm also there to offer some training that I just won't have time to do this evening we don't want to keep you here all night uh, but I, I'm really excited that uh, we not only have Doug and Susan here and they've been kind enough to host me during the day today I got to spend some time with them at their home and have a home-cooked meal instead of a hotel meal which I always love doing uh, I know Sajato offered me to come by her place and that's Part of what I love about ACN is the relationships and the friendships uh, that you build through this. Now, uh, for those that don't know me at all, uh, I've been doing this for 24 years almost. And I learned about the company when it was a year old, just like your friend maybe told you yesterday, come take a look. Well, a friend told me when it was a one-year-old company, his name was Larry Raskin. And I knew Larry because we'd both, both done this type of marketing before, but it was always vitamins, diets, kind of products you sell once, and then you gotta sell them again and sell them again. And he told me it was a service where you got a customer once, and the concept was get paid again and again and again. And that seemed to be a lot smarter. And it seemed to attract more business-oriented people than the kinds of things we had done. Uh, I also had been tragically involved with companies that kept going out of business. So every time it seemed like I was doing well, things were going well, the company failed. And I'm thinking, I don't want to make another mistake and start with another startup company because they always tell you everything you want to hear, right? And they want to tell you these big stories. And in the end, you've got to hope that the owners are committed to a long-term business. Otherwise, it, it can be tragic. And so what happened is I didn't join Larry. It took him five years before I sat in a meeting just like you're in tonight to actually be open-minded enough to look. And I looked because Larry had proven that the owners would be around over five years, which in traditional business is sort of a landmark uh, to prove they know what they're doing. Uh, they had opened up in Canada. Uh, they were doing their own billing for telecom. They were getting ready to open in Europe and they were talking about deregulation. And so Larry said, I know you had some contacts in Europe, which I did. Uh, like Mr. John McDougall, some of you know from London, uh, Mr. Alexander from Scotland were friends of mine in, in previous lives and businesses, so we knew each other. And I started coming over here saying, this got pretty big in America. Um, we don't have a lot to offer right now. It's only a, like a 15 pound a month bill, and the commissions look very small when you look at the percentages. Some of them were not even 1%. We were getting quarter of a percent on some of these levels that you saw. But it was not what we had then that was so exciting. It was a vision of what the possibility could be. And it's true that Larry worked with people from all backgrounds in life, 
Uh, most without any experience of doing this type of business, but people that just became aware of the concept of residual income, who realized it was important not to just have one income, but to have a second income. And so he started teaching me about it, he taught other people about it. Larry was the first guy to ever become an independent business owner like I am. I don't work for ACN, you know, none of us do in this room. We're independent business owners like you would be. And Larry was too. And he was the first guy that broke the million dollar a year income bracket, which just blew me away when you consider how little the bill was and how many customers they were able to create with just word of mouth. Uh, they didn't use any advertising, ACN still doesn't. And so if you're a business person, you'd understand that. If you've got to grow a product or a brand or a company, you got to get people to know about it so you advertise. And you spend a lot of money, a, lot, a big chunk of your overall revenue goes to continuing the business, put it into advertising. And so when you don't have to do that, you can redirect that money to us, the network, the independent business owners who basically tell people about what we're offering. And we grow the business in concept, I want you to understand that, by each of us getting a few customers and by also involving other people in the distribution network. We're a distribution system. We become our own customers, but we also get a few customers. Here's an important point if you're new. No one gets one penny, one pence, if you join ACN, pay your starter fee, and get involved. You don't earn anything for that. What you, we only earn if we can help you to succeed. Think about that. We help you to get customers, we get paid. If we can't help you, we don't get paid. So if you get paid, then we get paid. So it's a win-win situation. The other thing we do to build more revenue and earn more money, it's like any business, the more you produce, the more you make, is we introduce other people to the business, which is why we were all asked to look at it. Now, no one gets paid for that, but if we build more people and it starts to duplicate and everybody does a little bit, you start to earn commissions or overrides on the production of that organization. And Sajana went through that, and I remember when I was new, I didn't digest it very well. Uh, maybe you did. And the reason I probably didn't digest it, I wasn't a business person. I grew up around Boston. Um, I went to college for two years. My dad said, get a degree. I dropped out after two years. He was not happy. And the reason is I stopped wanting to study because I started playing guitar at seven years old, started my first band at like 12 or 13 in the garage. And I really thought that maybe I could have the talent and I could put a band together and I'd become a, you know, a pop star, a rock star. So my dad was not thrilled about it, especially when I grew my hair really long. It was an 80s hair band. Um, we actually had one record that sold like 50,000 copies, but only in France, which is really strange, but it's a fact. It sold there around 1980, and it's a single, you know, we recorded it ourselves, but it, it gave us confidence, maybe we could actually do it. We recorded a lot more songs over the years. We got, did, had a pretty good following in the New England area, um, but never got beyond really the opening band for the famous bands. I have a lot of friends, and some, from some of my bandmates have gone on to tour over the, all over the world. I still love to play my guitar, I love to sing, write songs. But I woke up at 29 years old, and maybe you're at that place in your life too, where I knew something had to change. I did not want to keep living the way I was living. Financially, it was not working. You know, I was living paycheck to paycheck. I was, the joke is, there was more month than money. And I kept finding myself, in one of those situations where I said, there's gotta be something better. Of course, dad says, go back and get your degree. That's not, there's nothing wrong with that. Both of my kids have advanced degrees, just finished up there. And my daughter's now in medicine and my son has his MBA. Uh, so it's great, and you're sure, get an education. Unfortunately, what most people do is when they get an education, they never really learn about money the way they should. And so when we get a job, we work an hour, we get paid an hour. And for most of us, it's linear income. You got a bigger degree, yeah, you get more per hour. Over the years, you might earn more money through pay raises, right? And that's what happens in the normal world. But if I'm your boss, and I see you're younger and coming up the ranks, you probably want my job, why? Because that's where you make more money, is getting a promotion. And what you fail to see is the people above you are keeping you down while you're trying to grow up. And there's only room at the top for the president and not five presidents, you know? And so 
when I looked at this system, what made me really grasp it as a beautiful way of, to do capitalism was that you had to help others succeed to advance yourself. And what's strange at first to understand is that you could do better and earn even more money than the person that invited you. And here's what's also great, they'll still cheer for you because they share in your success. Uh, so if you're new here, anybody new looking at the first time? Just, I know there's a few of you. All right, let's give those few people, yeah, we can give, let's give your hands. You know, he likes it. <laughs> but here's why I cheer for you, because I know something about you. You know, I remember being that new person. Here's why I know about you. You're not the average person. Every, uh, every one of us here invited people that didn't show tonight. It happens. You know, the fact that you would take Thursday, right? Wait, it's Birmingham, it must be Thursday. Okay, you, <laughs> you came out on a Thursday, probably after work, long day, maybe drove somewhere to get here. Maybe you saw a Zoom meeting before you came here, but you're here. So we applaud you because we know you're not the average person. So, you know, whether you decide maybe I'll be a customer to help out or maybe you'll be a partner or maybe you'll do nothing, we just want to thank you for being open minded to be here. I also want you to thank the person who invited you. And the reason I want you to do that is we've all been trained that we want to find people like-minded like us. People that are looking for maybe a second income. For some people it's money to maybe um, need clothing for the kids. Uh, for others, they, they need to make a car payment, or they want to buy a new car, so they're not, not making enough at work. Others are just a little bit enlightened that it's smart to have more than one income stream. You never know how things change, look what happened during COVID. So maybe this is a good, smart way to have a second income. And some are looking to have a full-time business career. And some want to know that if Larry Raskin did that, what's possible? You know, so there, there's a global opportunity as we're in many, many countries and there's many opportunities here. So, you know, we, I want you to just thank that person that invited you because they must respect you. And truthfully, if you decide to come on board, they, they hope you do better than them. And that's unusual in the world of, of business and in, in, in how money works and how employment works. So anyway, um, I just wanted to get that out so you understand for the new people that you probably not gonna understand everything in one night. Uh, but I do want to talk to the whole group because there's a lot of partners here that I won't see in London. I know some of you are coming down and I applaud you for making that extra effort. Uh, it's, there'll be a lot more you'll get there. But I, I'm here because I've been doing this a long time. And when I started working with the business, I started in Boston, the New England area. I built some teams. As the company opened in the UK, I called my friends. I said, why don't you come take a look just like you did, just like Zia did, just like Abu Bakr did, Doug. We, we just said, hey, get some friends together. I came over and there was all kinds of people in this pre-launch meeting. I had a small team. Over time, we became the biggest team in all of Europe because they kept coming back. I was flying back and forth with my partner each coming 10 times a year, 10 times. I was home for two, I was home for about three to four weeks and here for two. I was home three to four weeks here for two. And eventually I moved my family to the Netherlands. We were opening up all these countries and I would go to, and I remember when France opened, it was uh, just meeting with people at, in a restaurant, meeting with people at the <coughs> lobby of a hotel. We didn't have enough people to have a meeting like this. I told the people in Paris yesterday that it's, it reminds me of when I started. I'm finding people with desire that understand the vision of what we're building here as a distribution network, that understand residual-based income. I'm um, stressing something really important, that you understand timing and you ask yourself the right question. Now the timing. Uh, how many people recognize that everything seems to be more expensive today? Everybody agrees, is this just in America? Okay, they were on strike the day before I was in Paris. The whole country was shut down. They were rioting because they want more wages. It started out because of an issue with total energy. There was lines from the petrol stations for a quarter of a mile. I couldn't believe it. You know, it was unbelievable what's going on there. And yet the energy companies are making record profits while they drive up the price. Saying there's an energy because of the COVID that had a problem, then the war's a problem. Everything has gone up. Inflation, you hear about that lately? We've been having record inflation in the housing market, the interest rates for people on mortgages. There was a housing crisis back in 08. The, the experts are saying, the indicators are saying this is going to happen again. You know what the, the chain reaction is? Banks have problems. Then the chain reaction is unemployment. 
And right now, we don't have that big a problem in the U.S., but everybody says this is a dangerous, uncertain period. Now, here's the right question. If you understand what we're doing, which is not only offering services, but we offer opportunity, is this a good time to be showing people an opportunity? Would you say? See, I see where 2023 could end up. And I remember through the history I've been doing this, that in 2008, for about two or three years, I had the biggest income growth in my business. It's when I was going to Spain and there was so much unemployment that I was working with Mr. Bosch Bukhari and I was sitting with next to him. He'd have somebody meet us during the day. We sat and had you know, uh, maybe a coffee with him and they'd see a basic presentation on a piece of paper. He'd say, they go, what do we do? I'm interested, I need to make money. They said, well, go find two people and come back. They'd come back a couple hours later with two friends. And then they'd say, okay, get two more. And we were growing so fast because people were forced to look at new opportunities. So the reason I'm telling you that is that I've been doing some soul searching for myself. My kids are older, I'm empty nester now. I was first time in two years back in Europe in June, was here for 17 days, went all around Europe, had a blast, took a few holidays, and uh, you know, just to tour, be a tourist at times, and just missed everybody, missed my ACN family, missed the whole thing. I live on a beautiful lake, it's in the Northeast, it's a lot of snow, it turns to ice. I do snowmobile and ski sometimes, but I'm at the point where I really don't want to live there in the winter anymore. So a couple of things happened. You know, we sat around, and this is the leaders, we all know this. During the COVID time, we were doing something that was so foreign to our business, social distancing. It's such a foreign concept because our business is a social business. It's a brotherhood, a sisterhood, a sorority. Uh, you know, it is people from all backgrounds coming together, cheering for each other. You know, because it doesn't always go easy. It doesn't always go good. You have people that sometimes don't think this is a real business or thinks it's not a good business. But we often come together, and you've had a bad day, someone picks you up. You've had a good day, you pick someone else up because we all just want to have a better life. And having that secondary income is important, and having a chance to grow something is important. And so I went down, I spent some time with a uh, co-founder and actually the, the chairman of ACN, Robert Stemanowski. And Robert and I have known each other since I started. He basically helped recruit me. Larry introduced me to him as one of the four co-founders. Uh, and he and Greg Provenzato, me and George Zalek being really good friends, and he came over to Europe and he, he said, you know people in these countries? I said, well, I'm networking. I'm saying, who do you know in this country? Who do you know in this country? Who do you know in this country? We'd find people and we would go train city to city to city, just small little meetings. And over time, a meeting like this turned into 100 people. That turned into 150, 200 people. Next thing you know, we were doing national events with 1,000, 2,000. Then we were doing international with 10,000 people. Okay, now in COVID, what happened? People lived off residuals, okay? They weren't recruiting as much. It's hard to do this business only on Zoom. You can get people, you can train people, it's convenient, it's a perfect first look for the business. And we're gonna, I'm gonna really talk about this more in London, the system of how you do this business with a, what we call a private business Zoom, a PBZ as you say. We say PBZ, but I know it's wrong. It's PBZ, <laughs> since it is your language before it was our language. <laughs> so it's a PBZ, fine, okay, I'm with you. <laughs> so, but that's how we first, you know, kind of screen people to save us all time and energy. So we get the right person. And then what we do is we need a place to bring them. And we need live events. And we need to have the human interaction again. And so my big, thought was after I spoke with Robert is he said look Artie I'm going to tell you what needs to happen because we're meeting with the leaders I was in Florida for a convention uh, just a, a month ago and we had a few thousand people there it was right during the hurricane in Florida which was pretty horrific on the other coast thank God it was like at least not where our convention was so I made it down and and Robert and the uh, chairman and Greg the president who've all been in the field said look guys You've all made a lot of money during COVID. In fact, I made more money in 2021 than 2020 and never did a meeting except on Zoom. It's incredible that it's sustained that much, that well. But eventually, like any business, if you don't add new partners, if you're a football team and you keep just the same old players, sometimes they retire. You need new players. So 
Robert and Greg said, look guys, we did something to make your business much better. We purchased two other direct selling companies, which gives us now healthcare to offer in America, gave us all these uh, shopping discount services, all these things we never even knew were coming. And people got excited. It did one other thing. It brought in a whole group of people that's company was about to fail. They bought the company and ASAN became the savior for them. Okay, I'm gonna give you a personal story. When I first started network marketing, the first company I was in, I sponsored a guy that introduced me to this gentleman, Paul Kenny, who is a banker out of Rhode Island, finance guy. He got fell in love with network marketing. He saw me go from the long hair guy to my first big house, and then my next big house had 10 bathrooms and you know five fireplaces and seven bedrooms and all that stuff. And he, and he was at, you know, I worked closely, but then the company went out of business. It failed, it's gone. And I was like, damn, I'm never doing this again. I gotta find the right, the right owners that will be here long term. So Paul and I went in different directions. He loved the nutrition game and skincare, and he got involved in that. And he went into a company um, that did really, really well for him. He started working and had 30 or 40,000 people in Australia, he told me. He had people out in, uh, he was all the time in the uh, Philippines, in Kenya. He worked out there as well. And he won distributor there for them. That company went to $1.4 billion in sales and had several years of over a billion in turnover. During the pandemic, he told me what happened to his business was catastrophic. It was tragic, his word, tragic. I said, why, Paul? He says, we couldn't ship. The factory shut down. I haven't been able to get the people back. They're gone. The company's down to 200 million in sales. And he told me that they're looking potentially to sell the company. That's what he told me. I said, are you doing anything with the business? He says, no. He says, thankfully I'm good as an investor, Artie. I'm a banker. I just put my finance hat on and, and I've done well for me but I don't know what's going to happen. So of course I call my friend and I get this information because I learned what was going on in the product businesses. They all suffered. The whole industry came crashing down. This is the first time in my 30 years doing this that the whole industry sales plummeted from the COVID situation. ACN had residual from services that people kept using. Now we didn't grow either, we were affected. Certain groups did not well. A lot of countries, including groups all the UK, we suffered trying to figure out how to do this with Zooms, okay? So I sat with Robert, sat with Greg, you know, and we talked about the companies they brought in, and I met this guy named Presley, who I've known about as the top guy for one of the companies we bought that was doing energy. Presley and I got to know each other, and Presley came into ACN, and, and his whole team said, Artie, we were about to have no check. We were gonna lose everything this quick. The owners were done, they, they, was, they were done. So when ACN took over that company, we had, you've been always our competition. We came in here and had a whole different look at ACN. It was like a new relationship, like the first time you fell in love. Sometimes we forget 20, 30 years later, you know, to have those date <laughs> nights, right? It's just familiarity breeds contempt, as my dad used to say. So the idea is you should never do that. You gotta keep it fresh, right? If you can, that's what you should do. But these guys looked at ACN differently than the old guys who said, ah, this, ah, that, wish this, I wish that I could do this. They just said, oh my gosh. And they have dominated the production charts. That woke everybody else up. It's unbelievable. His residual just went over 250, you shouldn't put this on there. 250,000 a month. Wow. He says, I thank God, literally said, I thank God every night for Robert and ACN because they saved me and my family and all my team's futures. This is unbelievable. My friend Paul, of course, I'm hoping he's gonna join me in ACN. You know, he's made a lot of money investing, so he's got, I don't know if he still has the motivation. Here's the difference, I do. You know, I'm at a point in my life where what am I gonna do, sit around all the time? I'm still playing guitar, but it's kind of past my time to think that that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm not that good a golfer, so I love it, but I don't play it good, well enough. So I'm thinking, what do I wanna do? And I sat with Robert, he says, Artie, what we need the US people to do is the same thing you need to get Europe to do. We gotta get back to live events. He says, if you're a football club, what do you do to prepare for the next game? You watch the film of what worked in the past. And what he saw, 
is that we're not doing live meetings anymore. We're living on Zoom. We're gonna grow, we gotta get people from Zoom into the rooms and create a system of both, using both. So that's the great thing. So I told Robert that we had such a good time in June that I was thinking about coming back over here. So I wanted to know what his plans were for Europe because I'm willing to get an apartment and come live over in Europe and do what I did years ago, find the right people, except we have a great core leadership group, many talented people here. And I wanna lock arms with the people that have the blinders on, that are focused right here and wanna build something. Now we have only a few services right now and I'm told there's gonna be a, a pretty exciting announcement for this market this weekend, right? And, we, and Robert and I talked about our travel program. Uh, we talked about Truvy. In fact, I've been using Truvy on this trip, so I'm a great testimony, for not only the savings, but my priority pass. You know, I didn't realize that buy the priority pass, you can buy one. You know what the one is? It's $435 just for that pass, if you want to have unlimited business, which in my case is a smart thing to have. Okay, but it's, if you put that in our Truvy package with everything else we have, I look at Truvy with different eyes now. You know, I had five nights in hotels. I saved 279 something dollars in that period of time in just those five nights that I was in those hotels. So it's a real value, but Robert and I talked about this with Mike Koopas. He says, Artie, we have so many ways we can take this travel club. We're looking and studying at every other company in direct selling. We will keep improving that product. Okay, in fact, Mike Koopas texted me today. He was working with the wholesaler that has the biggest, they have two million customers of their network that we buy from, and they're working on a new platform. Um, other things we're doing, okay, is Robert's looking at companies. He may buy some kind of company, I don't know, services or products, but just like they did in the States, he did the same thing in Asia. He told me it's time to focus in Europe is gonna be spending most of the next six months, or the first six months of 2023, in Europe. He even told me he's excited to come out and do events with us and do meetings. I think he misses being in the field and he doesn't like just sitting in the office all the time. But I said, Robert, here's the deal. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna team up with the people. We're gonna build the pipeline. We got the vision. We know what you've done here. We already have some markets like Spain. We have a lot more things to offer right now. That market is just explosive. You got contacts in Spain, I would jump on that. Almost everybody I know in the UK knows somebody in America. You need to jump on that. But you can't ignore what's happening here. This is a big market right where we're sitting. There's like, I, I sent a message to Mike Cooper saying, there's at least five different organizations with professional leadership, you know, that have people here. So what we need to do is those professional leadership is make a commitment. We're gonna really open these markets. Over the next month, I'm gonna be back in November. I'm coming back to the UK in December, and then by the first of the year, I'll have some place to live over here, and I'm gonna stay right through it up until the summer and then make a decision what I'm gonna do from there. But the idea is I'm gonna come back every month, grinding it out like I did before, identifying the next generation leadership that really wants to make a change in their life. We'll teach you what you need to know. We'll hold your hand. Uh, look, look, what I really bring, guys, is experience and credibility of doing it. There's no question, I've done this. I had over one million fixed telephone customers. We did over $20 million a month in billing from those customers. It's an average of $20 a month in bills, but just on that one service. And that's huge residuals for a lot, a lot of people that we did that. So I really don't know, and even Robert was honest. He said, Artie, we're looking at all kinds of things right now. He says, but look, I could buy oil. If there's no pipeline, what's the point? You know, we gotta build a pipeline. So what you part of here is a company that's gonna be around. That's a big thing for me, because I've done this before. So is Abu Bakr and some others. We know what this can, what can happen in this season. All right, we also know that we can do business in multiple countries right now. ACN registers themselves in all these countries. We're not some you know system or game that they tell you everything and then when you go look up the country the company, they're not even registered as a UK entity, you know, and they're avoiding things, which makes me skeptical. You got credibility that we're here. Now, we already know what COVID's done to our business, to others, so this is a new start, and that's why I'm here and really excited about the challenge to team up with you guys. Let's see what we can do. I wanna grow meetings in every major city across the UK. I cannot do it alone. I'm not that good, no one is. But when you find like-minded people that really wanna make a difference for people, 
that want to make a difference in their own family, then anything is possible. Anything is possible. So look, this is also a business that's fun. It, you got to have fun with it. You know, sometimes you just got to laugh at some of the things people say or people do and just, you know, find like-minded people and keep walking. You take a step, we'll take two. You know, we have, we have a great opportunity here. There is going to be things that's coming out. I know this, but they can't tell me everything. They're on non-disclosures, they tell me, because they're looking at people's books and this and that. But I know in 2023, ACN Europe is going to look a lot different than it did in 2022. And that's what I'm excited about. When I came here 20 plus years ago, it was not anything. It was a fixed telephone and that was it. We had a vision to put on the table. And that's what we have today. So what do you do now? First thing you need to do, if you're new, get with the person who invited you. Tell them either you'd like to get more questions answered, which is fine. You want to get started, that's even better. Or maybe you just want to be a customer because we appreciate you being a customer. You know, that really helps us out. We need customers to get our bonuses and promotions. You know, give our services a try. If you're not happy, you can always switch to some, somebody else if you'd like to. Uh, know that what we have today is not where we're going to be, okay? Just know that for a fact. Just look on the website, click on Spain, click on it, see what we're marketing, and know we'll be bringing a lot of things to you uh, in the coming year. Um, so that's very important. So how I start people is this way. If Kevin was my new IBO, I'm going to say, Kevin, first step, what do you do? Let's just get to it. I want you to make a contact list of everybody you know. I don't care if I'm going to give you 100 pounds for everybody you know, just put a list down. I'm hopefully going to find some small business owners on that list or people like you, like-minded people, friends, family, whoever. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about it and narrow it down to maybe 20 people that you know. If you could work with them, they're just go-getters. But we're going to talk to everybody eventually. But what we're going to do is now I'm going to book a private business Zoom with you in the next few days. And I'm going to have you practice inviting. And all I want you to say is, hey, you open to make some money. That's what you were told, Abba He says, hey, you want to make some money? You know, well, what are you doing? You know, it's, well, listen, rather than me take a lot of your time, all I want you to do is get your opinion. If, you, if I give you a link to this, this Zoom meeting I'm setting up, you use Zoom? Okay, if I set you up on a Zoom meeting, I got my friend, Doug Jewell, is going to come on and explain. Doug's been teaching me the business. You know, he's, he's doing very well at it. He has this great background and da-da-da-da-da. But all I need is 15 minutes. If you're not interested, you jump off any time. No pressure at all. I really just want your opinion. But I believe in a soft but straight approach. You do not want to spend all this time talking about the opportunity because they're never gonna they're gonna judge it on everything you say without even taking a look. Let someone else present. So you peek and pass. Doesn't that take the pressure off you if you do? All you have to do is say, take a look. You got nothing to lose. If they don't like it, they don't like it. But sometimes they become a customer. What's the next step? We have to find a way to get into a training. And this is why the live events have to come back. I want to get to weekly events. And the cities that have weekly events going are going to be priority cities for me that I'll get to every single month over the next seven, eight months, giving you just a bigger event to promote for. But I'm going to work all over the place. And I'm going to look and talk to everybody. And I'm talking to all teams because all you know, it's all shit. rising tides raise all shit, right? Is that the saying or something like that? So that's why, you know, I got teammates here that are incredibly successful on their own with this. They know what they're doing. But I know I'm stronger with them than on my own. And I think they feel the same way about me. So we're here to lock arms. You know, we're here to defend what we do and to lead what we do and to help people that want to be with us. But it really starts with the new person and you are the most important person to us. So getting you to make that list, getting you to set up a private business Zoom, we'll even do a confirmation call, okay? So again, if you invited uh, Sajada as your guest, I'm gonna call her and I'm gonna say, hey Sajada, um, listen, you don't know me, but I'm, I'm, doing, I'm working with Kevin and he told me some great things about you and you don't know me, but I'm doing that Zoom tomorrow night or tonight. Listen, I don't want to take much of your time today. Have you used Zoom before? And do you know what the time is? All I want to tell you is Kevin was so excited that you'd even take a look. Now, I do not want to take 20 minutes on this call. He may have 10 people ready to be on there. So I don't have that time in the day to do that. So um, any questions, I would say, well, that's what tomorrow's for. That's what tonight's for. If you do those confirmation calls, 
your ratio of people showing up to look will be very high. Now if there was an event like this happening tonight, and you did one of those PBZs and had 10 guests on, or you did two or three of them in the last two weeks, how many of you would have more people here today? And the people you would have here would be qualified, pre-qualified. Just really just need the interaction, the social proof it works, the chance to meet other people like them. Maybe some they say they can do it, I can do it. That's what people used to say to me when I had the long hair and the earring and all that. And then they say, oh, if he did it and he's really successful, it must work. You know, there's all different reasons people join. But you gotta about think about you. Just think about you for a minute. You know, what is your situation today? Are you saving the money you wanna save? You know, you know, sometimes people say, oh, it's a couple hundred pounds or so to start a business. Well, if that's a problem, I hate to say this, but isn't that an indicator of what you're doing is not working? Isn't that why you're here? You gotta do something different. This is business ownership. You know, if you had to start a restaurant, you know, how much would that cost you? How much would the sign cost you? <laughs> you know, if you had to host your own website, we give you your own online shop in multiple languages. How much would it cost you to host your site? How much would it cost to do your reporting? To do all the billing? To find new services? To make new contracts? This is a business opportunity, so we're gonna teach you about being in business for yourself. The great thing is you can go at your speed, the way you wanna do it, just if you take our guidance, you'll have a better result. So, listen, I know um, probably a lot more than what you expected to get in the first look, uh, but I wanted to talk to my, kind of my partners that have been around for a while and make sure I deliver a strong message about what I'm here to do and why I'm committed to this project. People that have been loyal to me for a very, very long time. COVID didn't help us, it kept, you know, we were able to continue, but it didn't help us, okay? And now we wanna come out of it, and then the war come along. That didn't help us, because we had launched our own energy company in Europe. We were ready to roll with our own brand. Hundreds of energy companies went under. This price freeze in, in the UK, if you read what goes on really, energy companies don't want new customers. They're buying here and forced to sell here. They're under restraints. We just had a, a situation in Italy that we had such a big month with our energy partner last night. We broke what they would allow us to put in, as, as nobody's talking about it, but it's true. We got more customers than they want us to get because of the pricing problem. They can only, they buy at this price, they don't want to sell it at this, they, they buy at this price, they don't want to sell it at this price. So the prices keep going up. So sometimes the market's gonna be great for us, sometimes it isn't. But we are with a committed ownership group. They are recommitted. They're looking at Europe as their priority now. The chairman of the company is focused here. And you know, I know you were listening to um, Grant Cardone, the multi-billionaire marketing guy, and I listened to a seminar of his this summer I went online and took, and he said something interesting about you know, marketing. Where attention goes, money flows. And where Robert Stefanowski's attention goes, money has flowed for the 23 years I've been here in terms of investments in the, in the marketplace and earnings of the people in the business. And it's also true in your own life. What are you focusing on? You know, I used to focus too much on being the guy leading the party. That's what he did in a rock band. He led the party. I much prefer leading people to challenge themselves to grow, to have a better life, to look at entrepreneurship, you know, to help other people. You know, this is really one of those rare businesses where if you help enough other people get what they want, you will get what you want. So I want to again, thank you all for being here. I look forward to visiting with people. One thing we made a deal with this place, because trying to find affordable rooms to meet in is not easy. They said, look, if you guys will at least have some drinks or something, we'll give you the room to you. So let's all, at least some of us, stay around and maybe I just sit around and go out here and have a drink and I'll come around and visit with people. Um, just anything like that, or if you're hungry, the hotel would appreciate that, right, Doug? And they could maybe give us this room again. So, you know, and, and some of us that are leaders, we're gonna be huddling tomorrow, and we're gonna talk a little bit about how we're gonna kind of strategize and team up together because, you know, I look at this as the starting point of a new day in our business. So, God bless everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.